Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, welcome again. We appreciate God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his favor that is abundant. And we thank him because he's our shepherd. And like Psalm 23 says, I shall not want. And so we appreciate him in finding God that he remains our father. And so I invite you again to dive into this word. We started on the book of Judges. We have individuals that God used to liberate his people. Every time they sinned against God, there was a punishment. There was falling. There was calamity. And every time the people cried to God, the Bible says he would raise up men and women to save his people. And so in finding God, we know that when you find God, you have found everything. That is for your sustainability, for your upkeep. Now, these people during the time of judges, after they had settled in the land, like we saw, that every time that they would forget and go against God's way, God would deliver them into the hands of the other nations. And because he delivered them into the hands of the other nations, they would make them suffer, they would plunder them, and it would be disaster. Sometimes they would carry them out of their land. Sometimes they would suppress them from their own land. But the Bible said that every time they would cry, God would listen to them and raise a judge. And so just a few verses here, the book of Judges, chapter 2. And we talk about, um, no, no, chapter 3. We talk about the first judge called Othniel. Now, Othniel, before Othniel became judge, listen in verse 7, that and the people of Israel did what, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served Baals and Ashtaroth. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against them. So every time they would forget God, anger of God would burn against them. Now, in verse 12, there's another, another judge called Ehud. Ehud. And the Bible says that, and the people of Israel did again what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. You know, friends, this book of Judges has a lot that it teaches us. Sinning, going against God's way, leads to disaster. Following God, being obedient, is life. Like we have always quoted Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, that if you obey, if you are willing and obey, that you will eat the good of the land. But if you are disobedient, you are unwilling, that you will be devoured by the sword. I saw friends here, these people were time and again, time and again, time and again, time and again. But of course, this is human nature. But the thing is, it is for our learning. This is for our learning. And so the person, the judge that I want us to think a little bit more about is judge number two called Ehud. Ehud was one of the judges, the second judge actually to be precise, when they had settled the first one of the Othniel, they sinned against God and God raised Othniel and he delivered them. Now this Ehud was the second judge and after Ehud, there will be a number of other three or four that shall be looking at one by one. But now let's look at Ehud. Ehud, when you check the meaning of the name Ehud, I have said it before, I say it again, that the Hebrew names that are given, they are meaningful names. The reason why, even during our time, we need to give names that are meaningful to our children. Ehud means one who praises. 
Ehud, another sense of the name Ehud is the one who unites. And so he comes as the second judge, the second leader. Remember, I defined a judge in one of our episodes. Not necessarily judicial officers who do, you know, magistrates or in courts or lawyers or whatever they are. But of course, they did part of that. But we see that okay, these ones were leaders of God's people that were to guide them seasonally. Because there would come a season when they would be there. And there would come a season when they are not there. And when they were not there, people would sin. And so there was a vicious circle of sinning, vicious circle of suffering. Whenever there is a judge who would liberate them, they were deliverers. They were saviors of the, of the people of God. Now, Ehud was one of them. And about Ehud, we read about him in Judges chapter 3. And the verse is 12 following, following. But let's read a few verses, maybe up to 15 or 16 there, about the man called Ehud. Now, the Bible says that, um, and the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the Ammonites and the Amalekites, and he went and defeated Israel. This is King Eglon defeated the Israelites because of their own making, falling into evil. And they took possession of the city of Palms, and the people of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years under slavery. But verse 15, the Bible says that then the people of Israel cried to the Lord and the Lord raised up for them. This is the good news that the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera the Benjamite, a left-handed man. And there is interest for me in the left-handedness of this man. Left-handed man. The people of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made him for himself a sword. There was interest there. He made for himself a sword with the two edges, a cubit in length, and he bound it on his right thigh under his clothes. He put it on his right thigh. Because whenever, this is the left hand, whenever they are going to do harm or fight, they would use, they would turn their hand against and pull the sword. If it is, you are using your, your right hand, you put it on your left, and then you just pull it. Now, Ehud, the left-handed man, put it on the right, and they were used. The enemies knew that actually all swords were being put on the left hand. And so whenever they were checking, when you read this portion, they could check, but they would check only on the left. Think actually swords were kept on the on the right on the left, but for Ehud, a left-handed man, it was on the right. And so he went and he met Eglon, and there was a bit of trickery there until they were let in into the palace of this Eglon the man. And so Ehud came to him and he was sitting alone in the cool of his roof over the of his chamber, and he said, I have, a message, I have a message from God for you. Eglon was the king of Moab who had defeated Israel and had suffered under him for close to 18 years. And now God raises somebody. This is Ehud. And he goes and disguises himself until he killed Eglon who had made the people of God suffer. And so I pray that Anything that is making you struggle, anything that is making you suffer, there will be a moment when an Ehud will come and deal with it. And our Ehud, our Lord Jesus Christ, deals with those challenges that come our way. Sometimes we cry over time, seasons of crying, times of agony. Eglon had made the people of Israel suffer until Ehud goes and deals with the tormentor. And so we ask God to raise somebody. And so 
there is something that actually we pick from this man Ehud here, and you read on because of the time you read on and see how he did it. But he dealt with Eglon, the man that had made the people of Israel suffer, and so Ehud, because of what he did, he became the leader of God's people. And one thing that actually that makes me excited about Ehud, left-handed, and he looked like he was an unlikely hero, someone who was unlikely to lead the people, but he led them. Praise the Lord. That actually he did something that was extraordinary. You know, there are certain people that you can look at and then say, oh, no, no, yeah, this also. And then, I mean, God raises people that actually they do great things. Ehud, a left-handed man, unlikely to be a leader, but God raised him, empowered him, gave him wisdom, and he dealt with Eglon, and Eglon was no more, and Israel was set free from the hand of the tormentor. And so Israel is never learned from their pasts. This is a point that I wanted to bring to you, that their pasts, they never learned from it, because every time they would sin against God, he would deliver them into the hands of the tormentor, and they would be taken into exile, and some of them would be left in their land sometimes and suffer from there. And until he raised a, a judge, until he raised a leader, until he raised a deliverer, that actually they would be saved from their troubles. But many times they would forget. And so forgetfulness, friends, is a challenge to us even in church. You forget what God has done for you. You decline to follow what God wants you to do, and then it becomes trouble. I saw these people of Israel suffered many, many times because of forgetfulness. Of course, in the other episodes, we talked about rebellion. Yes, being stubborn, we have talked about that, but now these people would not remember the masses of God. And so it is dangerous. Can I repeat, it is dangerous not to learn from our past mistakes. It's dangerous to learn from your past mistakes, whether you are young or old. Our past mistakes need to leave us with the lessons. And so that you know where you fell from, what made you fall. And then next time, you maneuver carefully. The people that have repeated the class, you know. If you failed a class and repeated, the careful one will know what made him or her fail. And will go and tread carefully in that area. Score well, and then go to another level. And so this is something that actually we need to learn something from our past mistakes. Now, one other point is this man Ehud being a left-handed man, but he had his strength, praise the Lord. Left-hander, but with strength, God used him to deliver his people. And so this is something that you and I, someone who is completely unlikely that God will raise up men and women during our time to deliver God is people. And those that are already there, we say God will use you. God may God use the leaders that we have to save. To save. To help people know. And if the leaders are doing it, the people have to be put themselves in position to learn. And so actually, um, God. God's favor will rest upon all of us, those of us who are led and those that are leading us. And so friends, a few lessons from Ehud. Ehud was armed for the purpose of delivering Israel. He carried his sword, a left-hander, but he put it on his right hand. An unlikely position as well. And so may God enable you, my brother. May God enable you, my sister. That there will be deliverance by you. And be armed. 
you know, Ephesians chapter 6, we have said that before we say it again. In Ephesians 6.10, the Bible mentions something about put on the whole armor of God. This man did the same. Ehud did it and he delivered the God's people. Now may you be armed, my brother, my sister. Finally, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God. That is verse 13. Take up the whole arm of God. So the message here, friends, for you and me to take up the whole armor of God. Shamgar, I mean, Ehud did that. He took up the whole arm of God. Using his right left hand, he dealt with Eglon, the torment of God's people. We are going through many times of torment, but may God enable you to put on the whole arm of God. Another point that actually we get from Ehud is that God can use our abilities. Of course, actually, we are gifted differently. Our traits that other people might view as our points of weakness, that someone might view as inferior. Like this man being a left-hander, being left-handed, people thought that he would not do anything. But listen to me, God used his weaker point to prove his point. Praise the Lord. And so may God use you, your weaker point, that people may view as a weaker point to bring glory to his name. And this is actually something that actually I've learned from Ehud, the deliverer of God's people. So may God use you, may God use us all during our generation. May God use everybody in our points of weakness that God will continue delivering his people. Have you forgotten about David? When he confronted Goliath, who was bigger? Who was taller? Who was more armed? Who was more experienced? Of course, it was Goliath. But God used the car David. I'm using car because a small one. And he dealt a blow to the Philistines. So may God use you, my brother. May God use you, my sister, whoever you are. In your point of weakness, that there will be something that will bring glory to God's name. Especially during our time. May God use our point, your point of weakness that people may view as your point of weakness to deliver your family, to deliver everybody that's around you. So Ehud used his ability differently, used his trait of being left-handed dif separate differently, and it's because of his different giftedness that actually the enemy was watching from a different direction and no, it came from a different direction. You see, even Goliath, look at David, a little boy with a stone, with a ceiling. For him, he comes with a sword, with a spear, with a shield, with armor. He was armored all over his, himself. But God does his things. Surprising, surprising, surprising. So my brother, my sister, may God use you in your various ways. And this is Ehud, the man, that actually his abilities were used to serve his people. And may God use you to serve your people. May God use you to serve your family. May God use you to serve your tribe. May God use you to serve your clan. May God use you to serve your next generation. Your parent, God uses you to serve your next generation, next generation, next generation. And this is something that actually I've learned the next you work through you, another person will be blessed. 
through me, my children have to be blessed. Yes, because actually as I live for them and God blesses them, they live for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and everybody, and I will stand out as an ancestor. That actually through you, someone is being blessed all through. And we have seen people that have left riches for their children and the line has continued growing. And those that have been wise, they have moved on. They have, you know, not just moving on to disappear, but moving on to increase. So my brother, or rather my sister, something special for us here is that actually God can use somebody. And that somebody can be you to deliver his people. That somebody can be anybody to deliver his people. And this is something that actually um, I pick as a great lesson from Ehud. Now, another thing that I can learn from the book of Judges generally, and Ehud the man, is sin has consequences. Israel ended up being oppressed by a foreign power because they did not learn from their mistakes, from their pasts. I've said this before I say it again, that may God who is in heaven help us to remember that consequences are there. And then the person that was killed, Eglon, the leader of the Moabites, he was proud, he was confident, he was all alone, and he remained with a stranger whom he didn't know. He had never met before. Because okay, when Ehud entered, Eglon was there. And he didn't know what to do. He was, because of his pride and he had taken away, he had told his servants to get out and remained alone with a stranger. Now, from the other angle, really, there are certain things that we need to ask God to give us wisdom, discernment to know. And so from Eglon the Moabite, pride and overconfidence can lead to our destruction. And so we ask God, who is our father during this time, that he gives us the ability for discernment, wisdom to deal with our life's situations. Friends, from Ehud, we learn great things. And he's one of the judges that God uses to save his people. And we're picking our lessons in finding God series that find God, there's life. Do otherwise, there is disaster. And so we ask God, who is our father, that Ehud, the unlikely hero, becomes a hero. And so may God raise you. May God raise you in the name of Jesus Christ. May God raise you. Young man, may God raise you. Young lady, may God raise you. Old man, may God raise you. That through you, your clan, your village will be saved. I have great memories about Mary Magdalena. Mary Magdalene was a woman, a Mary, like other Marys. But Magdalene is because it was her village, Magadala, and because of her, her village arose. And therefore, he's got Mary Magdalene, and Magadala became known because of one person. And so I pray for you that God will use you, that somebody, that your clan, that will be known. And may God use you to deliver your people. Ehud, a left-handed man, God used him to deliver the Israelites. And so may God use you, my brother, my sister, and everyone else, that all of us will be deliverers first of ourselves and then the people that are around us. The book of Judges. This is judge number two that we have talked about and shall dive into another one. But may God bless you and watch over you. That like Ehud, who was an unlikely, may he also make you somebody among the many and so that through you, some other people will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.